is here. Uh, a man of many words, and he checks numbers too, given Obamacare and what, what's going on here. Nick, simply put, are we running out of doctors? What's going on here? You know, the irony is that there have never been, uh, we, we're at a record uh, height in terms of enrollment of new medical students. The problem right. is that the residency programs that those students undergo after graduating and, and before getting into practice, there's a cap on them because of federal regulations and the amount of money that's spent to get them into those three to seven year training programs. So consequently, the supply of doctors is, in, is ironically being held down by federal regulations and that's part of the problem. So what you have is a growing number of older people, right. 10,000 a day are turning 65 and over 65 you require require twice as many uh, uh, health services as under 65. And the number of doctors are, are, are growing that are retiring, reaching retirement age, and the supply is not going to meet the demand. And generally, we're talking about general practitioners, not just specialists, right? That's so right. Then the, pr the primary problem is those primary care doctors who are kind of the quarterbacks of patient care, there just is not enough of them over the next five to 10 years, and we're gonna see some trouble there. Well, the more government gets involved, uh, we've seen a decline in private practice. I in 1983, over 40% of physicians were in private practice. According to numbers in 2012, only a little over 18%. So we have the graphic right here from the American Medical Association. Uh, speaking of this, while we're talking about doctors, it's only fair that we bring on a doctor via telephone. Uh, Dr. David Brownstein joins us. Uh, doctor, we welcome you to America's Forum. Well, thank you for having me on. It is good to have you, sir. And as we take a look at health care and public policy and we see the decline in private practice. In your opinion, doctor, has uh, has Obamacare played a role in this? Well, Obamacare hasn't played a role in, in the decline that you're talking about. That's been going on for a number of years. And, um, I, you know, I would say that doctors are, you know, having more and more troubles out there. There's too many insurance companies. There's too many, too many regulations, too much paperwork, and too many hoops to go through to for doctors to be in private practice right now and that's what you're seeing and why there's been such a decline in private practice and why there's so many part-time doctors and why we're having such a shortage of doctors and there's a bunch of factors to this but either we make some changes or there's going to be some big structural problems in our health care and just what happened to the VA is going to happen to the rest of us we're not going to be able to get appointments with anyone because there's not going to be enough doctors out there well and that's already a problem right now you know Nick brought up earlier we were talking about that it's not that we don't have people going to school to become doctors. In fact, record numbers, right? But it's the number of residencies. And he's kept mentioning that red tape. Do you see that as being a problem? It's a huge problem. And either we decide how we're going to fix this or we're going to be in for this doctor shortage that you're talking about. And part of the problem is that it's very expensive to train uh, these residents. and. Congress won't allocate more money for it. Um, therefore, there can't be more residency slots, and it's sort of this, you know, dog chasing its tail phenomenon. And either we get it, either we get it fixed, or we're just going to be in a worse boat, you know, as the population ages. And a lot of reports have been saying New York is one of the states most affected by this. So, you know, both you're saying this and Nick saying this that there's a lot of red tape. So, what needs to happen? to get past that because it's going to happen well, regardless, right? I can tell you the first thing that needs to happen is they need to change the pay structure to doctors where there's a disincentive to be a primary care doctor because the specialists are paid more for doing, you know, the same thing a primary care doctor would do or different things, but taking the same amount of time, time frame, specialists are paid more. So physician or medical students don't want to go into primary care because Med school has become so expensive now. Their average debt is about two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars. They can't they can't make enough money in primary care to pay that debt and live the life they want to live. So they go into special specialty practice, you know, specialty residencies. And either we pay the family doctors a little bit more, and we cut the salaries and cut what we're paying the specialists, and open up residency slots, or I don't see a way out of this situation. Dr. Brownstein, I have a question. You know, ironically. Uh, there is a ton of money in the health care system. We, we in this country spend twice as much per capita on health care as the rest of uh, the Western world. 
But I think the question is, is it being spent to really help patients and drive doctors into primary care? And, and one, one of the suggestions that I've heard that might help solve the problem would be to allow four-year naturopaths, for, for instance, to fill the gap, to allow some of those doctors that emphasize wellness and emphasize prevention, I know you and your practice do this, to kind of step into the gap and help out. Do you see that possibility, and is that a potential solution? Well, I, there, there, there certainly is enough money out there to to do what we want to do. The problem is there's all these middlemen in the form of insurance companies and reg, you know regulators and you know siphoning off uh, these profits and you know big pharma included in that. And so I think that we need to recognize where we want this money to go. And I think the money should go to more primary care. We don't need to pay specialists these ridiculous amounts of money for doing simple things, which is what's happening now. And, you know, as far as uh, ancillary naturopathic doctors and um, nurse practitioners and physician's assistants, they're fine and they can make up some things, but they just don't have the training. You know, I know I'm biased because I'm a medical doctor, but, right. you know, we spend many, many more hours just getting training so we can see patients. And I can tell you, right. just going through four years of medical school does not prepare you to be a doctor. And I didn't go through naturopathic school. I didn't go through physician assistant school or nurse practitioner school, but I would venture it's the same phenomenon. Just because you're coming out of school with a degree does not mean you're ready to practice. You need training after that. And that's where that three to seven year training program comes into play that okay. these other practitioners don't have. And I think that we are not going to be re able to rely on these other practitioners to make up the slack. I think we just need to spend our money more wisely and and start, start looking at you know where the money's going, and it shouldn't be going to insurance companies. It shouldn't be going to big pharma. It should be going to the people who are seeing the patients. And um, well, David, know, let, let, we, let's follow up on that, Doc. In terms of actually seeing patients, you mentioned going through medical school, and then of course we bring the we bring it full circle back to the whole notion of residency and learning those skills outside the classroom, really getting practice to build one's practice. Now, what, what concerns me, you mentioned all the red tape, but the feds have their heavy hands in this to the point now where they want to dictate uh, the specialties for which doctors might be adept or adroit based on government assessment. And, and I gotta tell you, philosophically, that scares me as much as anything. I appreciate what you have to say about primary care physicians. There may be ways with loan incentives or some help there to get people back into private medicine. But doctor, are you scared that Uncle Sam may try to dictate what doctors can pursue what specialties, if at all? Well, certainly the government doesn't have a good track record with any of these things. But somebody has to say we have a certain amount of slots for primary care a certain amount of slots for specialists. And I don't know who that's going to be, but uh, somebody has to reallocate how physicians are being trained and you know what slots are available to them because, and how they're paid. Because right now, I can tell you, I see the medical students, they train in our office. They would, they would go into primary care if it paid better. It doesn't pay them enough. They're a quarter million dollars in debt or more, right. and they can't afford to go into primary care. That's why they're picking these, spe these specialties to go into. And, that's why we're having this primary care physician shortage. Well, it sounds to me like you offer incentives or you take some of the rate off the uh, the training for the school loan, and that might help. But what do you think, Nick? Well, in fact, there, there has been a federal program that allows students will pay back some of those student loans, the, the medical student loans, if, in fact, they practice in underserved areas. But I believe there's not a whole lot of money there, too, and that's one of the issues. It, it is a real issue, and uh, Dr. David Brownstein, our Newsmax Health contributor, we thank you for your insights and your input. We look forward to having you back real soon. Dare I say you're just what the doctor ordered. It's great to have wow. you here, and we thank do appreciate it. Yes, sir, thank you. Look forward to talking to you again. As always, Nick Tate, your insights appreciated, and uh, we'll continue to monitor what happens with Obamacare. Miranda, this is a subject we've got to get the input from folks That's who are true. watching. What do you think should happen with your health care? Did you realize the heavy hand of government not only at work with Obamacare, but with residency requirements? Why don't you tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. You can also email us, connect at NewsmaxTV.com, and there's Facebook.